Okay, so the point that we left it at the end of the previous video, four of five tests are done and we've reached the Roman numerals one. And I'm just going to re-record the Roman numerals bit because I got horribly, horribly gabbly, I got interrupted several times. And so let's do this one uh, again It's in its own little video. Um, okay, so the challenge here, we've got a number coming in and we're wanting to produce a string that is Roman numerals and we don't mind working iterably and mutably if we want to because we haven't talked about functional programming and immutable stuff yet in the course. Uh, so let's start off. Imagine that we were doing this in Java. Well, we, we need somewhere to put the results and we need somewhere mutable to put the results. And in Java, there's things called string builders. And well, it turns out that there is a string builder in Scala as well. And that is in um, uh, mutable uh, dot string builder to show that it is mutable. And so here we go, Scala dot collection dot mutable dot string builder. Let's pop back to our code. Um, new string builder, many apologies. Uh, now, what would we normally do? So one solution for this is to start off by saying, well, let's think about a number which is the remainder, the amount that we haven't yet put into the string. And we're going to work from, if you like, big to small, trying to lop large numbers like m's, thousands, off our number and add them onto the string. If it's bigger than a thousand, we want an m in there. If it's bigger than a hundred, we want um, a c in there, etc. And so we might start with some code that just says, well, while the remainder is greater than zero, then, and we could start doing things like if remainder is bigger than 1000, then I want to um, sb.append of an m and remainder minus equals uh, 1000. And we can keep doing this. Um, until we've run out of, num of numbers to put in our in our string and then return our string builder dot to string is our result okay so if we do that the next thing we then have to do is work out well okay what are all of the different sets of numbers and so let's just um, let's just be naive about this to start with so 500 is D and oops Uh, 100 is C and 50 is L and 10 is X and 5 I'm going to need to change those to less, uh, greater than or equals to aren't I? Sorry, I've got a bit of a habit of using greater than but of course if it's we want to put in a v for five not just for numbers bigger than five so let's go and put those as greater than or equal to's and the last one of course is if it is bigger than one then we want to put in an i all right now if we run that It'll produce something that's a bit like a Roman numeral, but it won't quite get it right because Roman numerals have this habit of doing things like showing 9 as IX or 4 as IV instead of 4 I's. How can we sort that out? Well, the easy way is actually because by the time we get down here, so if it's bigger than or equal to 10, we're not hitting the lower parts of, this, of, of these else's. So what we can do, for instance, is just decide, well, OK, I'm going to have a case that is not a single digit. I'm going to have a case that is, if it's less than or equal to 9, put in an ix. Uh, sorry, greater than or equal to 9, put in an ix and take away 9. And if I run this, 9 is going to work, but it's going to complain about a difference. Sorry, it was 4, of course, was the case that was failing. So I, I, I need to do the equivalent for 4 down here. So if it's greater than or equal to 4, I need to put in IV. And so once I've done that, um, it's going to start complaining about bigger and bigger cases. So in this case, I think I've not put in a CM for 900. Uh, so here we go. Um, 
this one here uh, w w was was not uh, correct. Uh, so let's put in a. Oop, sorry. Let's go and put in a cm. for 900 and let's see what it's complaining about next and uh, MCM LX LX isn't there of course for um, oh sorry how this is now saying uh, MCM 19 uh, that's 91 yep so we, we we've we've not got XC sorry it's now complaining about XC so let's put in XC and we should also put in XL while we're at it um, so let's put in XC and let's put in XL I assume there's an XL well we'll find out And so that is now working, that passed. Uh, so our very iterative loop has worked, but that, that's really long, isn't it? That's horribly long, that's spaghetti code, that, that's enormous. Can we generalize that a bit? Let, let's do a little bit of generalizing on it. Let's use our map notation from above. Uh, so where are we? Up here I introduced how to do a map from a, an int to a string, for instance. So let's pop down here and let's do that for the letters. Let's instead say that the numerals combinations we can put in is a map and let's go to, you know, 1000 goes to uh, M and what was it? 900 goes to um, CM and uh, I guess I'm assuming there's a 400 um, sorry, let's do 500 for next. 500 goes to D. So we say 400 goes to CD. 100 goes to C. 90 goes to XC. Uh, 50 to L. 40 goes to XL. 10 goes to x, 9 goes to ix, 5 goes to v, um, 4 goes to iv, and 1 goes to i. Okay, so now we've got a much more concise map containing our um, uh, well, it, actually, let's make that a list as we did before. Let's make that a list because I want to keep these in order because this is going from big to small and maps aren't ordered. So now what we can do is we can say, well, in here, let's do all of this stuff, this else ifs, etc., off of some kind of a cursor on my numerals. So let's say var cursor uh, is numerals. And... Oops, sorry, single equals, of course. I'm just going domestically blind for a moment. And let's then say, well, while the cursor dot head to get the element at the top of it, and while that dot the number, which because it's a tuple is in the first element, is bigger than our remainder, cursor, and all this cursor dot tail. Now, uh, if we ran off the list, we'd get list.empty, we'd end up getting an exception accessing head on an empty list. Uh, let's for a moment take a punt that we've got this right and that because uh, we're only going to be doing this when remainder is bigger than zero, uh, well, this is going to be true. Um, uh, you know, either we're not going to be, if, if we're in here, remainder is bigger than zero, uh, in which case we'll hit that one. And so that should be okay and then we will go sb dot append of um, and this is cursor dot head and we want the letter and we want to remove from the remainder 
the amount that we were talking about, which is cursor dot head dot underscore one. And now we've done with this bit that's in the loop. Uh, so we can do that and hopefully this will still pass our tests, but is a little bit shorter. But it is still mutable, it is still imperative. We've got a var here, we've got a, uh, a mutable data type going on here. We have not yet turned this into the functional solution to this, uh, which we will probably talk about next time.